In this video, we're going to continue working on the Google Sheets long-term athlete report by finishing off the second and third charts. I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily create multiple charts by just changing a couple of variables. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back. And as a reminder of how far we got in the last video, we got to the point where we have created our first KPI report chart here underneath counter movement jump and bench press since 2021-01-18. And we have um, added all of the filters so that we can automatically change around our data and it will automatically reflect the different um, metrics that we are choosing based on our selection. So as you can see, I'm playing around with it here and it is automatically changing to facilitate our selections. So as we move forward here, we're gonna just make our second and third chart, but before we do, I'm going to show you just a couple of things that you might want to consider to make this chart look a little bit better. So right now what you can see is we have this border that sits around the outside of the chart. If I were to double click on this chart, it's going to open up this editor window on the right hand side. And if I go to customize and chart style, there's a few things in here that you could play with. So we can have um, our chart style set to background color of any color that we want. If we want to change around the charts, depending on the color of our dashboard. So that's one thing you can play with. But the thing that we might want to do is with the chart border, I generally like to go to none so that as you can see now the chart just sort of sits in our dashboard and you can't really see it just sort of blends into the background and if we were to go to the view and turn off the grid lines now it just looks like it sits there in space and it sits and it kind of blends into our dashboard really nicely so you can see there's no ugly grid lines getting in the way so that's one thing that you might want to do if you're kind of printing out this template or sending this to coaches or other athletes that you might want to see it the other thing you might want to use under this customize window is you can use something like a maximize if you want the chart to be really big and just fit into your box that way. I don't typically use this because I don't like the way that it looks when my legend sits over top of different values. But if you think that that looks good, then that is something that you can also do. We could also set the legend maybe, I don't know, in the... Uh, We'll set it somewhere auto and see where it goes. And we can change the font side of size of the legend if that was important to us. I usually just keep everything on auto or you could turn it off if you wanted to. So there's a few different things that you might want to play with to make your charts just look a little bit different. And um, it helps just display your data a little bit better. Okay, so that's a quick kind of thing that we're working through first. Now, secondly, what we're going to do is use this same chart template and create our second and third charts. So I'm gonna go back to my data viz reference and you can see here now that I have my chart um, all created. And whenever I am creating a data viz reference tab, I usually like to pull all of the relevant information into that tab right above the chart for easy reference. And the reason for that is when I go and copy and paste this, I want to be able to find all of that information really fast and easily. Um, I know that there are some way people that do this where they will just reference everything right on the dashboard, but I think that this extra step just makes modifying any of the formulas a little bit easier because if I need to change anything here, all of the information that I need is right here and readily available for me to reference. Okay, so what I wanna be able to do is just copy this whole thing and then paste it a couple times to create my chart two and chart three with just a few minor changes. So if we paste it right now, if I were to take all of this data right here and go control C, control V and paste it, you can see that there are a lot of broken references. So for one, we have the broken reference of the athlete name. So the athlete name is changed from B3 to L3 because we've moved it over a bunch of rows. So what I wanna do there is for this specific reference, if I use the F4 key, I can lock that one in place. 
The next broken reference we have is the position. So now it's trying to look up L2, which is what we want, but it's looking it up in the wrong space. So what I'm going to do in this case is just lock that reference in place now. The start date is going to be something that we're going to have to modify. The test selection we will have to modify. The min and the max values, however, should always have so, sort of the same reference. Okay, so those, as soon as I pull in the right test, those should start to work again. And then the show test is something that we're going to have to modify. So if I take this one more time, control C and paste it, you'll see some of that information start to come in. And now we have to fix our actual reference. So for our start date, I'm going to just delete that reference and type equal, go back to my dashboard and go under long-term kind of chart two, and I'll just select that cell now. For my test, I'm going to do the same thing. Equals, go back to my dashboard and select test one. Hit enter, you can see that these automatically populate because they're referencing something within this data set. And I'm going to do my show test and I'm going to delete this reference again. Equals, go to my dashboard and use the, slow the uh, show test tab here under long-term test two. So now we can see true. We just have to do the same thing now for test one and test two. So under test two, I'll type equals, go back to my dashboard and select test two. Again, it's the same test. Um, and then I'll do the same thing for my show test dashboard and then show test two. So we have the first kind of boxes all fixed. Now we just have to do our team averages include, um, et cetera. So for the first one, team average include, we'll use the cell that includes that box. So I'll type equals, go back to my dashboard and select that cell. Same thing for the second one because those are all one box. Dashboard, same cell. And now we just need to make sure that these references aren't broken. Okay, so what is this referencing? This is referencing this test as well as it's referencing it in the actual titles and data named ranges. And then this one, if you can see all of these references over here are actually referencing the, um, the min and the max values from our first long-term chart box. So what I'm going to do in this case is go to my actual formula over here and I will remove all of these protections. So I'm going to make all of these references wide open and hit enter. It doesn't change my value here, but now when I copy and paste this, you can see my value change over here. And because all of this is set up the same, now it's going to reference the same thing. So all I did for that was under one team average, I just took away all of the dollar signs here because everything was being referenced off of this first chart, but it was locked in. So when I take away the dollar signs, if I move it to the same space on the other um, box, it will reference the other box. I'm gonna do the same thing with my score value down here. I'll just highlight it all, use the F4 key to take away all of the dollar signs, hit enter, control C, control V, and you can see we have the same value. So it is pasting the same test. And that's about it. So. I'll just change this to long-term chart number two, and we have all of our data set up for that chart. Now let's see what happens if we have any references in here that are locked in. All of these should be um, able to be moved. Make that a little bit bigger. And we'll go through here and see if we have any locked in references that might need to change. So here we have B6 and B7. So I'm going to actually change these and take away the locked reference. So I will take those dollar signs away, hit enter, doesn't change the actual formula. Same thing here, we'll take those dollar signs away. Oh, because I've highlighted all of it, it is putting dollar signs on my range. So I'll take those away as well. I'll make sure that that didn't happen over here. It didn't. So dollar signs gone there. There's no references in here that we need to change or this formula or this one or this one. So if all goes according to plan, I should be able to copy these two rows 
And as long as I paste them in the same spot, we should have all of our new data. So we can see the data is the same because we have bench press under each one. And we can see all of our different um, tests. I'm going to just center all of these so that they look nicer. So that is our lowest value. That would be our highest value. We can see all of the different um, data just works because we've taken away all of the locked in references. Now I can do the same thing for this chart. I should be able to control C, control V this chart. And if I double click here, it should open up that setup tab and under my data ranges on the right side, all I have to do now is change these to the appropriate ranges. So our dates were in A10 to A100, but now they're under K. So if I change these K, these A's to K's, and then the next one we're looking at is the D's, which is our first test scores, which are now under N. So I'll change these D's to N. For the E's, they were referring to second test score, which is now under O. So I'll take these E's and make them O. For the G's, they were referring to, if I move this over a little bit, my B, my um, first test team average. So instead of G's now, we want Q's. So I'll change these G's to Q's. My I's were referring to second test team average, which is now under S. So I'll take these I's and turn them into S's. And then B, and C we're referring to first and second test values, which are now L and M respectively. So I will change those around as well. M and M. And when I hit OK, all of my data changes and we can tell that this is um, that this works because these two values are the same. All of these data labels are the same because it's the same test selected twice. So I now will just copy this um, chart and then go back to my dashboard, paste it in, and I'll stick it in the box here, just the same way we did with the other one. And there we go. And I will take away the border from that one the same way that we did for the first chart. And there we go. So we've got two of our charts created. We're going to go through that process one more time and I'm going to do it a little faster this time. So the first thing I'll do, I'm going to just copy the whole thing now. So all of it, I'll paste it over one. I'm gonna change this to long-term chart three and let's change all of these values. So athlete one is locked in, position is still forward. Okay, so we're still referring to the same thing. Start date we need to change. So I'll take the start date from my chart three. Whoops. Take the start date from my chart three. And then we'll go back. We will take test one from our dashboard test one. We will take test two from our dashboard test two. I'm sorry, this is probably making some people dizzy. We will take our show test from our test show test. We will take our show test two from our dashboard show test two. We will take show team averages from our show team averages. And I'll do that one more time. Show team averages from our test show team averages. And there we go. All of our data is filled in because everything works the same way. All I'm going to do is sort of scroll over here a bit. I'm gonna to have to actually add some rows on the end here, insert one column right, insert one column right to give myself a little bit of room to work. I'll delete that coloring. I will center all of these and let's copy our chart one more time. So control C, control V. And for this chart now, we just gotta switch all of those references around. So I'll double click here and go to setup, we'll go to our data. So the first thing we want is our date, and now our date is stored in U, so I'll switch those around to U. Um, instead of N, we want test one, which is under X. And then we want test two, which is now under Y. 
team average one, which is now under AA. Team average two score, which is now under AC. So it's just really a matter of changing some of these variables around score one, which is under V and score two, which is under W and hit OK. And all of our tests change. Now, the second thing that we want to do with this chart, because of the way that I have it set up, I'm going to go to customize my series and I'm going to select these two series. The first one we'll select is the beat test. And I'm actually going to change this one to a line series. And I'm going to add, um, let's see, we'll, we'll add some different things to it. So we have data labels and we will position them center and they're going to sit right inside of our chart. And we'll make the font size a little bit bigger. Uh, that's a little bit too big, we'll say maybe 14. And that should be good enough for that. And then series two for counter movement jump, we'll do the same thing. We will make it a line chart. And now we can see two sort of variables irrespective of each other. Actually, if we go back to series one, instead of white, let's make the text color sort of a red color. So it sits in the middle there. And then series two, counter movement jump. Sorry, series one, we'll make the, the text color um, blue. And then series two, which is red, we'll make the text color red and we'll put it inside. So now we have sort of our line charts and I can now copy this one, go back to my dashboard, paste it in and make it kind of the same size as my other ones. And Google Sheets has added some cool new functions that as you can see, it gives me the sort of sizing guidelines when I'm doing it. So I can make everything look kind of the same, double click, customize, chart style, and I will remove the border. So just like that, if I shrink this down and I make this a little bit smaller so we can see it all at the same time, we've created all of our charts and they should all be editable and actionable. And it was really pretty easy after we've set up our data the way that we did. So from here in the next video, what we're going to do is create our scores tab up here and I'll show you how to create some different scores um, as well as make those completely editable so that you can change the scores on the fly. And then that dashboard's pretty much done and you can start to use it with your athletes. So I hope this video helps you out. And if it did, if you could like and subscribe to the channel, that really helps me out as well as if you could share this video to make sure that anybody that needs this information sees it, that would also really help me out. And until next time, um, keep on working on your project and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.